Hello everyone, back to into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day uh, model today um, for the next four weeks. So this is taking us to uh, the beginning of uh, June actually. So um, we're going to see what the temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies are showing for the next, uh, for the next um, four weeks. Uh, across the UK and for Europe too. We can't see mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights of this, unfortunately, but you can get a rough idea, actually, from the temperature and precipitation anomalies of uh, of what the broad sort of pattern is going to be. So what we're going to do for today's uh, first video, um, coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have your regular week to 10 day video update. As usual, at the Hungarian Met Office, uh, this one, so a big thank you to them for uh, supplying us with these charts. So we begin with the uh, week one temperature anomaly. This is taking us from the 6th through to the 12th of May. It's week 19 for the year, but uh, it's week one for our forecast period. So uh, we find we've got a large area of uh, cooler or colder than average temperature anomalies coming up in the weekend, actually particularly focused around the central parts of Europe uh, with anomalies going around uh, three to six degrees below average. That also affects some parts of Scandinavia, especially around southern uh, Norway and Sweden and into UK to Scotland, Northern Ireland coming out with a temperature anomaly of uh, three to six degrees below average. Otherwise, more widely across many parts of uh, Europe, right the way from sort of uh, northern Scandinavia there down to Italy and Mediterranean just here. Uh, we see temperatures widely sort of uh, one to three degrees below average. So it is a pretty cool scene actually uh, this week across many parts of Europe. It's warmer down in the far southwest, Spain, Portugal, coming out warmer than average up there. And the far eastern, northeastern part of Europe from kind of like the uh, Russian border down to the Black Sea, those areas coming out warmer than average as well. It's very warm across central parts of Russia, real heat wave uh, going on there. Uh, Mediterranean wise, so uh, it's a warm scene through Spain and Portugal. We're getting to the central basin of the Mediterranean, the islands like the Balearics and uh, Corsica, Sardinia, colder than average there, and most of Italy, I mean, down into the southeastern corner uh, coming out colder than average too. So away from Spain and Portugal generally temperatures a bit below average this week. Uh, precipitation anomalies in the week ahead. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Uh, it looks quite unsettled in the north. So uh, much of Scandinavia coming out with, um, uh, with uh, above average precipitation there. The central areas and western parts of Europe also looking rather unsettled. So kind of like eastern parts of the UK and then into the low countries over to uh, Germany. A bit above average with precipitation uh, just here. Southern France down to Spain, Portugal and the central men a bit drier than average. And then over the Asiatic into the southeastern corner and then up to the eastern side of Europe. Overall it looks a little bit wetter than average there. So it's varying from area to area. But it looks quite an unsettled week overall this week actually. Actually, uh, for many places. Well, that takes us into week two. Week two is covering the period from the 13th to the 19th of May, week 20 for this year, of course. We find that uh, the west of Europe is actually going a little bit above average with the temperature anomaly. So for Scotland and for Northern Ireland, or for Rep Rep Republic of Ireland, uh, it's going a bit warmer than average there. Still looks very warm down across Spain and Portugal. Quite a hot week coming up. Uh, there. France is close to average, although eastern parts of France cooler than average. And then most of these central parts of Europe down into the central Mediterranean, including uh, the Balkans and also southern parts of Italy, colder than average. Temperatures ranging anything from around 1 to 6 degrees above average. Up across Scandinavia, the temperature anomaly is uh, going closer to average. And then this far eastern side of Europe again, close to the uh, Russian border coming out uh, warmer than average there. Precipitation anomalies from the 13th to the 19th of May are looking a bit of an east-west split, really. So uh, we've got drier than average conditions uh, re-emerging across the west of Europe, including much of southern Scandinavia, also including uh, um, Germany, France, UK and Ireland. So in the west, it's clearly turning, uh, it's clearly turning drier through this week. High pressure is uh, re-establishing itself, reasserting itself. 
pushing the unsettled weather and taking the unsettled weather into the east and the southeast of Europe. So from southern Italy and Greece northwards up towards um, these eastern parts, we see that again, precipitation anomaly is above average. So wet on average in the east and dry on average in the west. Then we're moving through to uh, week three, which is going to be taking us from the 20th through to the 26th of May. Uh, and we're going close to average down across most parts of Europe. I assume the signal is beginning to weaken. Still looks a little bit cooler than average down across the central part of the Mediterranean. So particularly focusing around Italy, Corsica, Sardinia. Those areas look, still look a little bit cooler than average. Still a bit of a signal to be warm and average across Spain and Portugal. Perhaps looks quite warm in the southeastern corner for Greece and Turkey. Further north, though, um, just very weak signals. The temperature anomaly there is very, very close to average. Not much of a signal to work with. It could be that temperature anomalies are widely around average through this week, or it could just be that the model is losing its signal as it gets through to week uh, to week. Three. Week three precipitation anomalies from the 20th, 26th of May. Again, very, very weak signals here. Does look rather dry on average, you'll notice, to the north of the UK, going up towards Iceland. So that's probably indicative of some high pressure setting up to the north, which could be a rather cooler and more unsettled signal for sort of northwestern parts of Europe. Actually, you could get low pressure coming in underneath it with jet stream. But there's really not enough to work, work on to, su to suggest that. So overall, it's just a very, very weak signal there. Uh, for week three, very average with temperatures, very average with precipitation. Probably the model is struggling to uh, get much of a signal for that week. And then these really weak signals continue into week four as well. So this is taking us from the 27th of May to the 2nd of June. It's week 22 for this year. It looks a bit cooler than average across the far north of Europe, so the parts of Scandinavia and close to the Baltic, a little bit cooler than average through there. Uh, a little bit warmer than average in this southwestern corner around uh, Spain and Portugal. Again, it looks like Iberia is in for a very warm sort of four weeks, actually. So if you're planning to go on holiday in the next, uh, in the next few weeks down to the um, costas or uh, into southern parts of Spain, um, then you're going to be in for a, a really a, a really warm time of it by the look of it. Temperature anomalies are consistently forecast to be above average in Spain and Portugal for the next four weeks. A um, little bit cooler than average, maybe still hinting around Italy. Otherwise, again, just very, very close to average with those temperature anomalies and not much to work with, with precipitation anomalies either. So, uh, again, we probably possibly have this sort of very weak signal for driving average conditions to the north and to the west of the UK, which would imply, probably would imply some high pressure up here, uh, out to the north and west of the UK and Ireland, which could be sending the jet stream careering southwards like that, so trough within the 500 millibar flow, if you like. But again, there's just not enough really to, to be able to suggest that is what's going on. And it does look a little bit driving out across northern parts of Spain as well, which will, would also imply high pressure ridging in from the Azores, and that would, of course, send the jet stream some jet stream uh, pushing off up there. So it's all a little bit of a mystery, actually, weeks three and four, as you get through to the end of May and uh, the beginning of June. Very, very weak signals. And what signals we do have are a little bit conflicting, actually. So uh, I think for weeks three and four, we just leave that alone, really, and concentrate on the first couple of weeks. So, obviously, we're starting off very chilly, very cool, if not cold, across most parts of Europe in uh, in the week here, the coming week. Things get warmer. It looks like high pressure asserts itself as we go through to week two, taking us into the middle part of uh, May. It looks like high pressure will reassert itself, particularly out to the west, which will send the cooler and more unsettled conditions over to the east from southeast of Europe, and then after that, as again, second half of the month and up to the beginning of June, then it all starts to get a little bit of a mystery, and uh, we'll probably know more about that next week. Right, that's it for your ECM 30-day uh, look at this week. Do it all over again. Uh, next week, we'll be back later on this afternoon with your uh, week to 10-day video update. That's going to have all of the features uh, with it, so come back for that uh, this afternoon. That's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.